I'm going to talk to you just for a short few minutes about Michigan StrokeNet, which is another network trial. I know you've heard a number of them today, but I wanted to back up a little bit because I wanted to reiterate some things that some very wise people before me have said. And I think Dr. Silverlight put up the nice slide that said, why? Why do research? My simple answer to that question is, we do research because it has the chance to live beyond what we do here. And if we're really lucky, and really talented and really fortunate, it goes on and spreads around the world. Why stroke? And this goes to something Dr. Richardson said. You have to have a story when you communicate your message. Who in here, raise your hand please, has had a family member have a stroke or stroke-related illness? Look around the room, keep your hands up. Since this conversation started, one acute stroke has come into the emergency department, as evidenced by our stroke pagers that you hear going off all the time. And I've had another communication via text from a very dear friend whose mother has had a stroke and is in a hospital. A stroke happens to somebody in the United States about every 45 seconds. So there's a lot of patient population to work with. We have about 800,000 strokes a year of all types. So there's a lot of protoplasm here to work with. Michigan StrokeNet is one part of a large network to try and help us find better clinical solutions for the care of stroke patients, which as we learned earlier, Dr. Barson was so instrumental in changing back in 1996. What's the importance of that date? Dr. Moyer? FDA approval of Alteplace, right? the last really major advance. So what is StrokeNet? It is a national clinical trials network. It's designed to conduct multi-site phase one, to, excuse me, phase three clinical research trials and biomarker studies. And specifically, it's gonna focus on three areas. Stroke prevention, acute stroke treatment, and post-stroke recovery, rehabilitation. It uses a centralized infrastructure, and the University of Cincinnati is the national coordinating center, uh, to establish contracts, IRB arrangements, contractual arrangements, and to manage the trial infrastructure. And it depends on, it relies on 25 regional hubs, which is what we are, to run those trials. Very simply put, these are our trial, these are our spokes and hubs uh, that you, that I mentioned earlier. So in red, Cincinnati, Medical University of South Carolina is our research, uh, excuse me, our data management center. The other 25 are our regional networks. There's Michigan Stroke Net up there. Uh, nice cross section for the entire United States. We work with a fairly small team here at the University of Michigan. I have to give a shout out to Sherry Goldfarb who keeps us all on track. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry's also critical for interfacing with the PCAR network, which we have heard some about earlier today over in the poster session. The uh, pediatrics are also included in StrokeNet, and we are currently working on the first newborn stroke trial ever in a clinical trial. I want to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Devin Brown, my co-investigator, and Dr. Lewis Morgenstern from the Departments of Neuro Department of Neurology. So this is where we were in 2013. Michigan StrokeNet covered University of Michigan, St. Joe's, Ann Arbor, St. Mercy Memorial, Livonia, Sinai Grace, and the DMC Hospital. In 2016, we've spread across the state and across state lines. So we now encompass the University of Kentucky, St. Mary's in Grand Rapids, and we're looking at other hospitals in other states. We're trying to poach our competitors before they poach us. It's a competitive environment. We are also trying to start establishing networks of networks to leverage the vast volume of stroke internationally. And this includes China, Japan, and European centers. Currently, Michigan StrokeNet and NIH StrokeNet are running all of these trials. Now, I will be the first to admit, 
And Dr. Silverglad, if he's still here, will be, and Dr. Moyer will be the first to point out that there's a lot of duplicates to this list to what you saw earlier in Net and Siren. So we are starting, we have been helping with those trials as our network has come up to speed. We've been a little slow on the uptake nationally, not locally. The first StrokeNet dedicated trial is a Telerehab trial and the Diffuse 3 trial. Telerehab I'll speak of in just a second, but I want to focus on the Diffuse 3 because I think that's what's most important from an emergency medicine perspective. Diffuse 3 is designed to find better treatments for patients with large vessel occlusions, big middle cerebral artery territory strokes, the devastating ones, the ones that thrombolytics don't work so well on. They work, they just don't work so well. Can we take these patients, either with or without thrombolytics, in a delayed fashion to the endovascular suite, to the cath lab, and mechanically remove that clot and achieve better outcomes? That's the fundamental question. Can we do it as late as 16 hours after the stroke? That's our time window. So it is a game changer possibility with a positive trial result. When you think about a network and you design a new network and you design clinical trials, at the end of the day, whether you're putting in your first pharmaceutical grant, your first foundation grant, or your first NIH grant, you have to think about performance. What are my milestones? What are my markers? You've heard a lot of very people smarter than I am tell you they're going to meet with you as mentors and say, here's what you're going to do and here's when you're going to do it by. Because if you don't, you wind up like Brady Hoke. Five wins, seven losses, didn't work so well. And if you meet those milestones, hopefully you become more like Jim Harbaugh. 20 and 6, I was at the Orange Bowl, it didn't work out so well, but that's okay. Uh, for the OSU fans in the audience, Dr. Moyer, uh, watch out. Wait till next year. <laughs> so I'm very proud to say that Diffuse 3, as I said, came online the past year. Within one week of our initiation letter, we had enrolled our first patient. And within four months, we were in the top 10% of enrollers here. Much of that credit goes not only to the people at the University of Michigan, but more importantly, to our colleagues at St. Joe's. Because St. Joe's sees two strokes for every one that we see. Everybody runs and eats lettuce in Ann Arbor. Ypsilanti is a much better, you know, hunting ground. So we really appreciate the fact that the clinicians over there are looking for devastating strokes, large NIH stroke scales, in an extended time window that might benefit from a clinical trial. And to access that, all you have to do is activate the stroke pager or call MLINE. This is the overall clinical trial enrollment. These are Brady, excuse me, these are Jim Harbaugh numbers, not Brady Hoke. We've been above the curve ever since this trial started nationally. And we are rapidly focusing in on our first interim data analysis point. I mentioned the tele-rehab study. This has less importance to an emergency medicine audience, but it's an under-recognized area of clinical research. As a country, we spend vast sums in the rehabilitation of stroke patients. And when we delve down into the actual science of the effectiveness of that data, it gets awful murky awful fast. One of the missions of NIH StrokeNet is to actually bring a robust scientific view to the rehabilitation of post-stroke patients. This is a very novel high-tech trial that looks at providing rehabilitation services to stroke patients via the internet at home so that they avoid post-stroke rehabilitation, hospital stays, and their concurrent costs. And they get to stay in the environment in which they're most comfortable. Uh, it's at a small number of sites. We are not directly participating in this. There's only six sites within StrokeNet that are doing this for various NIH reasons. But they have recently headed into Jim Harbaugh territory. Michigan StrokeNet has also been very effective in integrating itself in the leadership structure of the national StrokeNet. Uh, Dr. Barson serves as the ad hoc member to the acute stroke working group for the Net Now Siren, and I sit on the committee also. This pipeline of acute 
stroke clinical trials, phase two and phase three primarily, now exceeds over 42. Somewhere within the next five years, there is going to be this large disgorgement, budgets allowing, of clinical trials and clinical research from the NIH into the network. Primary and secondary stroke pre prevention, many of those other studies that you saw, CREST-2 uh, uh, at, at one of the forefront, point, shine, secondary stroke prevention and treatment. Recovery and rehabilitation, I just spoke about the tele-rehab trial, and we have, as I said, our first pediatric trial coming up for newborns with stroke within the first 30 days of life. That's gonna be an interesting trial to do. The University of Michigan has also been very successful in creating our own trials to put into the network. And I have uh, uh, great thanks to Niraj Shaharudi, who is also the PI on Diffuse 3, uh, for putting in the prelims trial, which is in a submitted phase, and we're waiting to hear for that. Uh, my colleague, Devin Brown, has put in the PAP trial, which has been scored and is going back for its second attempt. And CoolCap, uh, an, an effort by William Moyer and Jamal Sosner, to look at hypo local hypothermia as in a development stage. So these are all things that are happening around you that may dramatically change stroke care in the very near future. In addition to the clinical trial aspect, one of the things that's different about Michigan StrokeNet and the National StrokeNet is that there is a mandatory educational component. And we have a training process for one-year fellows in StrokeNet. One of our first graduates was, of course, Dr. Sosner. Thank you, Jamal, who has brought immense talent and immense time and effort to the study of stroke. And I defer to him now on my MRI reads. So it's, it's great to have him on board, and uh, we really appreciate having him. He's also working with Dr. Moyer, as I said. He's had numerous uh, abstracts and articles submitted and presented already, and we look forward to uh, seeing more and more of his work uh, as the network progresses. This is just a short list. Jamal, I told you I was gonna do that. Targeted hypothermia and acute ischemic stroke, geospatial analysis of the stroke net sites, looking at access to stroke-related clinical trials for different socioeconomic classes within acute care, rehab, and pediatric centers, and the economic impact of the previous instinct trial. So what's next? What's the future? In summary, We've got multiple persons in this room today who have been touched by stroke. Some people, even this morning. All of the future NIH trials, clinical trials, will be conducted through StrokeNet. The NIH has declared this, so this is where the action is going to be. Uh, we are here to help you with your clinical trial implemented faster, better, stronger, for those of you who remember the $6 million man. Uh, than we did in days past. And emergency medicine is truly the front door for acute stroke care. So all of those trials are coming to our doorstep. Emergency medicine is also probably an underutilized opportunity for primary and secondary stroke prevention. When you start thinking about the way telemedicine is going, the way outpatient medicine is going, we're going to be the ones identifying atrial fibrillation. We're going to be the ones putting on loop recorders. We're going to be the one putting on new devices that Kevin Ward and his group comes out with to put on the skin, excuse me, and uh, identify undiagnosed atrial fibrillation. This is coming from our shop. StrokeNet is the place to make a difference. By participating in trials, enhancing your training, and developing and leading your own trial. So I if you have any interest in this area, we're making a difference in research. Come talk to us. As Jerry Maguire once said, help me help you. Everybody who's an intern doesn't understand this reference anymore. <laughs> and with that, I will finish up and ask for any questions. Thanks, Philip. Any questions? About stroke net. I, I'm, I think what you said about you know whether residents and trainees, whether they stay here or whether they go to any number of other places around the country, they're likely to encounter stroke net and, and this type of research. So knowing that a lot of these pieces have originated here and have been ongoing here, I think um, is really important and just to have that touch point. 
we're metastasizing. Look for us in your local area wherever you go. Yeah, great, thanks. Thank you. Uh,